What's going on people? This is Jagos and today we're going to be talking about outside and inside criticisms of the gaming industry. Whereupon we talk about the differences between the two as well as what's going on and how do you sit here and effectively figure out the differences between the two and what does that mean for the future. This is something that I wanted to talk about after the Gamergate issues because the Gamergate issues kind of sat here and have been exhausted to an extent but some of those issues really need to be discussed in their own detail because people do need to understand them and why we take these issues and take umbrage when someone just comes in out of nowhere and just says whatever and thinks that they're a valuable critic to anything we're talking about let's say outside criticisms first we had for the last three years a demagogue pretend to be a critic of the gaming industry instead she was a critic of the gaming community and somehow made it seem like people are far more liable for malicious behavior than they really are and on top of that, I do see this kind of coming out of the psychologists and psychiatric fields to varying extents. I'm going to have a link in the underbar to a recent RT documentary, which I have to also criticize in this video. So, number one, I will recommend that you all, if y'all haven't seen anything of Anita Sarkeesian, you could probably look at one of her videos and see the issues that come up with that. Or you can also look at the Underbar, the RT um, documentary on gamers and see that there are a lot of issues that are coming up outside of the industry that have to be taken notice of by the gaming community or else they're going to just manifest into something even larger. What I want to say is gaming critics outside of the gaming industry are indeed valuable when they are actually doing it for a strong and decent purpose when you're doing it to sit here and say what is happening to our society in any way shape or form sometimes people have to look it into or maybe they're too close to an issue to really come into it themselves they don't see things in a different way you have to look at different viewpoints and see the validity of them and then if you continue to see the validity of those statements as something that is coming up, you can also sit here and, and look into different arguments and figure out why are these issues coming up. That's what an outside critic does. Maybe they have a fresh view on things. And with that view, they can also sit here and bring a lot of new things to the table, a lot of new perspectives, which actually help to sit here and make the industry a lot more, a lot stronger, a lot able to resist negative temptations or negative things that are going on. Um, if you want to look at some of the things that happened when journalism took on the Roger Ebert type of deal, a lot of people sat here and had valid criticisms of his commentary. However, nowadays we don't really get that kind of mature commentary because our language has effectively devolved instead of evolved. We're still dealing with the fact that most of the journalists are full of nonsense as well as some of the ramifications of the whole um, demagoguery that was, say, the Anita Sarkeesian crowd the SJW crowd, as well as those people that would rather not talk about video games in a very holistic sense, but instead use it as a battleground for their political ideologies. Outside criticism is something that you need. It is just so that way you can never have a hive mind of just like-minded individuals. This is probably one of my cri strongest criticisms of what has occurred around, say, the Gamergate issue, whereupon KIA, Kotaku in Action, has become a hive mind of just nonsense. Because the one thing that you can sit here and post quickly about is how extreme those SJWs are, but you can't get much video game coverage nowadays anymore. People 
have exhausted all of the corruption in the gaming industry. So they go to the most shallow base, which is fight every last SJW as if your life depended on it. Start a culture war. You get into a whole bunch of mess. And quite frankly, as at this point in time, I'm like Mercutio and saying a plague on both your houses because that stuff just doesn't interest me. In regards to inside criticisms, sometimes you get developers and people that are sitting here saying things that you may ha not have a perspective on. Now, in a political sense, when you're talking about, say, what's going on in a political sense in America, the FBI is realizing that James Comey, for example, sat here and get, put them on a dog and pony show about the Hillary Clinton fiasco. This is something that you can look up, but people have to use anonymous sources because their careers can be on the line if they decide to leak this information. I'll even have that in the underbar, so if you're actually interested in political statements from the FBI, you can look at it for yourself and think about it yourself. I take it with a massive grain of salt, but I want you all to sit here and understand. This goes for other industries as well. Usually, if I try to have a talk, I try to make it so it's politically vague, but this one, it's a little bit more politically charged. Take it, take it as you will. The point here is, you do need valid inside criticisms. You do need people that are on the inside that are commentating and critiquing the gaming industry. Within the gaming industry, you have EA Spouse, which was one of the most largest and best examples of what, say, a quote-unquote whistleblower can do by sitting here and explaining how family time and things like that are being underutilized and crunch time is becoming the norm instead of an exception to what's going on in the gaming industry. You have the things and issues with Ubisoft. You can go to Activision. You can go to any of these big companies. And somebody on the inside has to be able to tell what is going on and tell you with clarity that there are conditions that are being undermined to sit here and make people wage slaves in some way, shape, or form. If you are constantly in crunch time and you're constantly working overtime, you are going to sit here and basically damage your relationship with people both inside the industry as well as outside. You can't really have a family if you're constantly working over 80 hours a week. It's just physically unreasonable. But people are trying to say that this was, this was a norm in 2008. But if you look at it, and nowadays with so many alternatives such as Steam, Indigo, uh, you can find things on Kickstarter or doing other things, you're not hearing that as much because if people don't like the alternatives that they see, they will find alternatives elsewhere. But those issues are still being met. Um, you have games now that are becoming a lot more diverse in what they're doing. And so you do need a lot more people to make those games, particularly in the AAA industry. And the AAA industry is pretty much monopolized, so you always need somebody that's going to tell what is going on. So let me use one last example. The Sim City fiasco. I call it the Sim Shitty fiasco. The reason being is because the Sim Shitty fiasco was about the publisher trying to sit here and claim that Sim City 2014, 15, I don't care which one, I don't really play the games as much because I no longer give EA my money. But EA was trying to say one thing, the developers were saying another. And the people that were pushing out the the main arguments, the this the journalism, was the fact that it was the developers trying to sit here and say, um, EA is lying to these people, and this game could have done a lot of different things, but nobody has looked into it from our perspective, and so here's our perspective. 
Those are the types of things that you have to sit here and pay attention to. Because if you don't have that inside criticism, that inside knowledge, EA would, was making bank off of your ignorance of these issues. Those are things that you want to avoid. You want to avoid Activision taking advantage of you with Guitar Heroes by putting one out every year or every six months just so they could sit here, inflate the market, and then, and, you know, make more money than was legally or even morally feasible simply because they had all this stuff and they wanted to push it out and it was making bank and they were speculating on it and gambling that it would make more and more money. It's ridiculous, but it happens. So, my point is, if you have criticisms, try to look at them with a fair mind. Look into them, but if they're not honest in any way, shape, or form, like Anita Sarkeesian's analysis was not honest in any way, shape, or form, she wasn't a critic. She was a demagogue. People have to sit here and realize the difference. When you have these outside criticisms, such as Roger Ebert, you will see that he sits here and respects the medium, even though he doesn't truly understand it himself. It's going to take time for a new brand of critics to come in and respect video games as much as possible. And what I am going to do, I will make a critique of the RT video later on. I will have that instead of making this a much longer video since that is something of a separate issue that I want to go into. But for the most part, I want people to look into inside as well as well as outside criticisms think about them for themselves and see what they get out of both instead of just listening to journalists and thinking that they're all going to sit here and tell you the exact same thing take care see you next time